Last year, an 8-bit Sonic classic, Triple Trouble, was reimagined by independent game designer Noah N. Copeland. This 16-bit interpretation replicates the original Game Gear experience as a generation-accurate home console game. Its visual identity is akin to Sonic 3, which serves as the game's prequel. This last May, the project's final 1.1.0 update was released. My camera died recently, so while I've got other videos sitting on hold, now's the perfect time to talk about this astounding project. I've played through the original Sonic Triple Trouble a handful of times. The 8-bit Sonic games are enjoyable, but I never considered them to be as revisitable as those on the Genesis. It was more so the hardware limitations that kept them from being the spectacle that they usually were. Now convert this experience into 16-bit, and its potential becomes much clearer. Full disclosure, Triple Trouble 16-bit is less of a remaster and more of a complete remake. The level design is its biggest difference, making it feel more like a true 16-bit game. One of the trailers demonstrated that even technical limitations were being considered in development. The game's art and sound is accurate to Sega Genesis hardware. So the story goes like this. Robotnik is putting in his final effort to stop Sonic after he destroyed the Death Egg. He eliminates Sonic's super form and manages to take off with one of the Chaos Emeralds. While this is going on, Triple Trouble's new character, Knack the Weasel, isn't far behind. You'll encounter Knack many times during the game, but he's not all, because Knuckles is here too. And he's also after Sonic. In the original 8-bit game, Knuckles was tricked by Robotnik into thinking that Sonic wants the Emeralds for world domination. But in 16-bit, it plays out differently. Metal Sonic is back, who takes on the likeness of Knuckles. So it's actually that thing you'll be fighting throughout the game, unbeknownst to Sonic or Tails. Don't trust anyone, not even yourself. You were never able to play as Knuckles in the original, so having the ability here is great. Although, you won't unlock them until you've completed the base game as Sonic and Tails first. Remember how in the original, you could only play as one or the other? Well this time, you get both. You're able to switch between the two instantly, without the use of a second controller. Admittedly, I didn't often find a reason to switch to Tails, but he's great for ascending when underwater. The other character always responds next to you, so this is especially effective in the title Plant Zone. You can also play as Knack and Metal Sonic in free play. However, Knack requires all Chaos Emeralds to be collected, and Metal Sonic requires completing the game with Knuckles. Not long into a new game, you'll likely notice the presence of Sonic's Drop Dash and Super Peel Out abilities. The Drop Dash is very useful, and fits well with the game, especially considering it was once planned for Sonic 3. I often forgot that the Super Peel Out was even a thing. Maybe you'll find more use for it than I did. Two stages into the game, I was having a great time. The physics are remarkably similar to the Sega Genesis titles. They're not identical, but you'd be hard-pressed to find moments where you can actually spot a difference. Regarding graphics, the original environments have been expertly remade with a striking amount of attention to detail. There are plenty of new sprites which look official when compared with the classics. The new soundtrack is cool, and I'm a big fan of the elemental shields returning. The only complaint I had at this point was how easy it was. Some of these zones I'd end with nearly 500 rings, but the difficulty quickly ramped up as I entered the third stage. Following the format of the other 16-bit games, there's a good variety of alternate paths and shortcuts to explore. I enjoyed the many gimmicks it has, none of which felt tacked on. The submarine section was neat, and the transitional snowboarding stage was unexpected and fun. Of course, there's also the special stages, which really surprised me. I would argue that some of these are more fun to play than those which Sega came up with in the 90s. There's a brand new stage called the Egg Zeppelin, taking place just after Meta Junglira. Feels like a blend between the Sky Chase Zone from Sonic 2 and Flying Battery Zone from Sonic & Knuckles. Short, but sweet. Much like the game itself, clocking in at around an hour and 30 minutes. Which, to be fair, isn't much unlike the classics it was inspired by. Triple Trouble 16-bit has a lot of unexpected twists. For example, the ending to Sunset Park was priceless. Kind of a rough transition between these two, but many other transitions are excellent. The world building introduced in Sonic 3 made the game's locations feel more authentic. That same effort has been achieved here. 
It's a truly seamless adventure. Noah Copeland clearly has an understanding of how to create good atmosphere in a classic Sonic game. Now, in terms of negatives, there isn't much. One thing I noticed, however, is that Knuckles, as a playable character, feels a bit unfinished. He doesn't always connect to walls. Sometimes I'd catch him sliding on nothing. The following's more of a nitpick, but most times once I've finished climbing a surface, he goes right into the slipping animation. Then this boss fight broke on me and I had to restart the level. The issues with Knuckles are relatively minor. For the most part, he played very similarly to the classics. His campaign is somewhat unique, much like in Sonic 3. There's some cool stuff here as well, so I encourage you to check it out after your first playthrough. I should mention the game's competition mode. This isn't like Sonic 3's. It's actually a sort of mini-campaign with multiplayer options. Beyond the exchanges and dialogue, you'll be popping balloons, racing... There's also what's essentially a deathmatch mode. Within these, there are various power-ups that you can collect to give yourself an advantage, or screw over your rival. The competition mode is alright, probably better with a friend. I think it's charming and commendable that this exists at all. You may be wondering what the latest update has changed. I didn't play the original release, but from what I've heard, this added quality of life improvements, much of which can be toggled in the options, such as shortening or outright skipping the snowboard segment. I really like the website they have for this. So much effort surrounds this project and yet it's all completely free. I've come to find that this is a very effective way of advertising yourself as a developer these days. Do something wild with an established IP, take no profits, then make your own original game and people might tag along. I have no reason to believe that's what this guy is doing, but even if so, you couldn't blame him. It's a more effective means than pouring your heart and soul into one project, only for it to get 10 downloads. That's an indie scene story I've heard countless times. I think now, especially with this under his belt, Copeland could have a successful future ahead of him if he wants to keep making games. All you gotta do is put this on a resume and cite the articles and awards it received. What awards did it win? How about Best Homebrew Game of 2022 from Sega Powered? That's a huge honor, and it was absolutely deserved. If you're interested in Copeland's work, he has another game called Shirobi Metal Ninja. It's also free, and looks pretty good, so you might want to give that a try as well. For Triple Trouble 16-bit, you've got a variety of platforms to choose from now. It's on PC, Android, and even Mac. Nice! Another game to add to my two others. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from me in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time!